Moving to a new city can be incredibly scary and exciting all at the same time. Just like you, I was eager to learn more about Salem, Oregon before I uprooted my whole entire life to move here. I was nervous and excited about moving to a new city, but in the back of my mind, I wondered if Salem was a good place to live, if it was a place worth relocating for, and if I would even be happy here. You're probably asking yourselves very similar questions about what it's really like to live in Salem, Oregon. And while I can't answer those questions for you and your family, I can absolutely tell you my perspective as somebody who's also relocated to Salem. You're about to learn some solid facts about life in Salem, but more importantly, you're gonna learn about why Salem, Oregon might not be the right city for you. I moved to Salem with my husband about five years ago. And when I first got here, the only thing that I knew about Salem was that it was the state capital, and most oftentimes I would just drive right by the highway exits and avoid Salem like the plague. My mom grew up in Salem, and because of that, I somehow decided that Salem was not the place that I ever wanted to end up. And sorry, mom, I think you're great. I think Salem is great. It was just, you know, my young years. If you're anything like me, you probably have had some of the similar thoughts that I did before I relocated to Salem. You probably are asking yourself, what do they do in Salem? Is it a good place to live? Will I like it there? Well, these are great questions, my friend, and I feel very well equipped to tell you that after five years of living here, I'm gonna tell you everything that I wish someone had told me before I relocated to Salem. If this is your first time to this channel and you wanna know everything there is to know about Salem, Oregon, from somebody who's just like you who relocated here, hit that little subscribe button and boop that bell to be notified every time I put out a video each week. My name is Claire odd and I'm a local real estate broker here in Salem who specializes in relocations and just like you I also relocated to Salem and now I get to make videos all about living in this amazing city for you my future clients if you want to work with us in the home buying process go down to the description of this video where you're gonna find all of our contact information reach out so that we can help you Salem only has about 200,000 residents which isn't very much, but we are smart folk here because we do have a Costco. <laughs> you know that Costco is just the best place ever. We totally get it. And all jokes aside, this is probably one of the more popular questions that I get from my YouTube relocating clients. They say, where's Costco in comparison to this house? It's like a barometer that just transcends all geographical boundaries. I always tell my clients, no matter where we are, it's gonna be 20 minutes to the nearest Costco, which by the way, we only have one, but everything is 20 minutes away in Salem. You wanna get from North Salem to South Salem, 20 minutes, West to East, 20 minutes. So the answer, my friend, <laughs> when you ask me, how far away is my future house from Costco? 20 minutes. If you're like me, sometimes the idea of walking into a mosh pit that is called Costco nowadays it can sometimes be a little bit unappealing, if you know what I mean. So if you're not the Costco kind of person, don't worry, because we also have Trader Joe's, Fred Meyers, we have some local natural grocery stores. And in terms of shopping, we really do have a surprising amount of big box stores to choose from. We have a Target. We actually have multiple Targets. We have a new Barnes & Noble. We have a TJ Maxx, a Ross, an Ulta, a uh, no Sephora, unfortunately. But since moving here five years ago, the amount of growth and retail stores that have come into Salem, it's been pretty darn pleasantly surprising. We even have a Nordstrom's rack, which is a big step up from the dilapidated Macy's that we have downtown. Um, it's also in like the most depressing mall that you will ever experience, but I guess all malls are kind of depressing now. Okay, now I'm just gonna end this kind of tidbit shopping grocery chat about 
I still go up to Portland to get my shopping staples. For my babes out there who love the idea of getting some retail shopping therapy in at Nordstrom's, or maybe you wanna go to Zara, Neiman Marcus, Saks Fifth, well, we don't have any of those in Salem, so you need to be going into Portland to get that kind of retail therapy. The good news is it's only 45 minutes to get up into Portland where all of those great shops are. Salem has a lot of good things going for it, but I don't know if I'd really consider shopping top of the list. The only thing that you need to remember from this video is that when you've decided you are purchasing a home in Salem, schedule your one-on-one -on -one consultation with me so that we can find you the perfect home in the perfect neighborhood in Salem. All right. Let's get back to it. You, my friend, are going to be car dependent in Salem. I am a metropolitan kind of babe, and I can tell you that hopping on the Portland trolley, AKA the streetcar, was how I got around most places when my husband and I lived in downtown Portland. So when I relocated to Salem, I very quickly realized that I was 100% car dependent. Now, Salem does have its own bus system called the chariots, but I just don't really think it's very comprehensive or reliable. And from my perspective, it's just not good enough to consider it a dependable mode of transportation that can quickly get you from one place to another. So sure, I might be a bit of a diva, but I don't wanna walk 15 minutes to my nearest bus stop to then just hop on the bus and it take forever to get to wherever I need to go. I want it to pick me up at my front door and drop me off at my front door. Yeah, that is probably pretty diva-y of me, but is why I say that Salem is 100% car dependent. The one exception to all of this car dependency is if you decide to purchase a home in a walkable, neighborhood in Salem. This means that in certain neighborhoods, you are gonna have close proximity to downtown Salem and some grocery stores around that area. But other than a handful of very specific walkable neighborhoods in Salem, most of the neighborhoods are going to be car dependent, just like the rest of the city. If you are interested in learning about what the most walkable neighborhoods in Salem are, I have created a whole entire video about that exact topic, and I will link that into the description of of this video. Before I get to my next point, if you are finding value in this video so far, give it a thumbs up and go down to the comments and tell me where exactly you're thinking of relocating from. The next thing that we are going to be talking about is the fact that it does rain here. It gets foggy, it gets ray, ray it gets gray or a combination of all of those things the rainy season here is about nine months out of the year i guess i will say that during autumn it isn't always raining and gray so maybe i'll dial that back to like six months out of the year it's going to be kind of rainy and gray and possibly even foggy and yes slightly depressing what that means for you is that if you're not used to the rain and pretty much not seeing the sun for weeks on end you do need to prepare yourself mentally my friends now lucky for you i've made a whole entire video about how i survive the oregon winters here and don't become fat and lazy and depressed because seriously i i'm kind of kidding here but like it's a real thing. Seasonal depression is real. So watch that video. I've also linked my winter survival guide in the description of this video. One of the most amazing things about all the rain that we get is that it produces some of the best nature around. Dare I say the best nature globally. Salem is really, really close to Silver Falls State Park, which is well known for its hiking trails and gorgeous waterfalls. But for my uh, fellow 30 something year old babes out there, it's also part of the opening scene of Twilight. I don't know why I threw a wink in there. I just wanted to. Salem really is a paradise for people who just love to be outside even when it's raining. Salem is the state capital of Oregon, which might make you think that we are just a boring place where all of the political tension in Oregon resides. And I cannot deny that or the fact that, you know, we do have protests every now and again. Not everything is peachy keen here, but I can tell you that after living here for five years, this place is completely different than I expected. It's better in a good way. Actually, I'm gonna go with a great way. Coming from a place like Portland and living right in the heart of downtown, I had a lot of misconceptions about Salem when I first got here. First and foremost, I had it in my head that Salem was nothing more than a podunk town right off of the I-5 corridor. And to all of my Salem friends, I'm sorry that I thought that. 
I just didn't know any better. The only time that I had ever gotten close to Salem was when I was going to Bend, Oregon and taking the highway exit that cut through Salem to Bend. Yes, I was going to a completely des different destination because I would have never fathomed of, you know, coming and checking out Salem. And especially because when you're driving on the I-5 corridor, Salem just doesn't really look like anything. But you know what? Salem is a great place. And from the outside looking in, you really just don't have much perspective about, about what the city actually is like. Salem is an incredibly robust city and it is not all about politics and protests here. I haven't even walked in front of the state capitol in my five years of being here because it's just that much removed from how you can inhabit your daily life here in Salem. Salem does have a very robust downtown, which has invested a whole heck of a lot of money into the infrastructure and its development in recent years. If you are wanting to move into Salem to open up a business of any kind, now is the prime time to do that. There is so much opportunity in the downtown area of Salem. Downtown really has gotten a big facelift and I think the biggest one is by far the outdoor amphitheater on the waterfront. It's brand spanking new, it is so cool, and we have had so many fun summer events held in that amphitheater. On our waterfront, which is completely getting developed with the amphitheater, but we also have a carousel, we have a splash, Flash pad for the kiddos or your dog, which is so stinking cute. I've seen dogs playing in that <gasps> splash pad before and it's just a Adorable. But my point is the waterfront is being developed as a hub for this city. The waterfront is right next to downtown Salem and I, I'm just so excited by the growth and development that we are seeing in downtown Salem. It is very exciting. When I first got to Salem, there were a few outdoor events and activities and kind of, you know, the city would host a few different things, but just the development that this city has seen in the past five years, it's amazing. And I think that Salem is no longer going to be sitting in the shadow of its bigger sister, Portland. Salem is becoming its own phenomenal city. I do want to mention that downtown Salem is going to be a destination. And I think that's because we don't yet have a lot of residential living in downtown Salem. This is changing. They are starting to put up new apartment buildings. But if you're somebody who wants to purchase a condo in downtown for, you know, that style of living, it's just not really that big of a thing right now. Hopefully in the future, they will build more condo buildings. But the condos that are downtown, when they go up on the market, they are gone so incredibly fast because they are just so rare. So if you want to live close to downtown, watch that video that I have about walkable neighborhoods because that's really gonna give you the best version of downtown living that's you know, actually available with homes for sale. Because downtown Salem is more of a destination and there's not a lot of residential living down there, things close down around 5 to 6 p.m. It's kind of bizarre. And you can expect that on Mondays, most restaurants are also closed. So downtown has kind of this um, quiet vibe in the evening times and on Mondays. It's kind of weird. If you enjoyed this video, you need to watch this one next. Bye friends.